The black facing. I cannot believe that in 2017 we still need to be telling people they shouldn't be dressing up in blackface. To being a football manager pro. Antoine Griezmann gets a lot of attention away from the field. Yet somehow, despite being a literal World Cup winner and having 31 goals and assists last season, nobody appreciates his play on the pitch. He should be in Ballon d'Or talks, but nobody's talking about him. Atletico Madrid fans appreciate him, but nobody else in the Liga shows him any love. And despite the fact that he has arguably been France's best player since 2016, people only discuss Mbappe. So why is one of the best attackers in the world, the highest scoring Frenchman in La Liga history, a player who scored in a World Cup final, going unnoticed? I love Derrick Rose. <laughs> to see why Griezmann isn't being talked about as much as he should be, we have to look at his childhood. Griezmann was being overlooked at an early age. By the time he was 14 years old, he had already been turned down by many different French clubs. Among them Lyon, Auxerre, and Saint-Étienne. Not long before, Metz had shown interest in him, telling him to come down for a trial, but the club cancelled at the last minute, saying that Antoine was too small. In fact, it was actually down to sheer luck that Griezmann was recruited at all. According to the Bleacher Report, Griezmann had just played a tournament arranged by Paris Saint-Germain at Camp de Loge, the club's training ground. He was there as part of a trial with Montpellier, but while all the other Montpellier trialists were wearing club tracksuits, Griezmann was wearing his own clothes. He played in a t-shirt with the word Jamaica on it. The scout who noticed him was a scout for Real Sociedad and he wasn't even supposed to be there. He had just landed at the Paris airport after a scouting trip to Argentina and received a call from some friends in the industry who wanted to come and say hello. They were all watching the youth tournament, the one that Griezmann was participating in. After getting this call, Old Hats, the name of the scout, decided to turn up. Griezmann only played 10 minutes, but that's all he needed to see. He was impressed by Griezmann's work rate and technical quality. It still took some convincing from Ohats to get Real Sociedad to sign Antoine since at the time, youth scouting mainly focused on athletic and physical abilities which Griezmann did not fit into at all. But it was done. Real Sociedad took a chance and signed Griezmann for their youth team. It took time for him to break into Real Sociedad's first team but after 4 years in the club's youth system, he made his debut, called up for the 2009-2010 preseason campaign. As you can see, from an early age, Griezmann's talents were doubted and overlooked. Even the scout who believed in him in the beginning confessed to having doubts on whether Griezmann would make it. Griezmann would not make his competitive debut until September of 2009 in the Copa del Rey against Rayo Vallecano, a substitute in the 77th minute of a 2-0 defeat. A harsh introduction into the unforgiving world of football. On the 27th of September, he made his first professional start and also scored his first professional goal against Huesca in a 2-0 win introducing himself to the world. Two weeks pass and Griezmann works his magic again, this time against Salamanca. Then in November of 2009 he scored back to back goals against Hercules and Recreativo de Huelva, the latter being a match winning goal. Griezmann began to consistently appear on the team for the rest of the season, scoring two more goals in a win against Cadiz and Numancia as Real Sociedad earned promotion to La Liga. His performances were electric and Real Sociedad was very impressed. They gave Griezmann his first professional contract, a 5 year deal with a release clause of 30 million euros. At the time, Real Sociedad wasn't the only team that was paying attention to Griezmann's good form. He drew considerable interest from Ligue 1 clubs like Lyon, Saint-Étienne and Auxerre. Pretty ironic that clubs that rejected him as a youth player were now begging Griezmann to be on their team. While other teams might have noticed his talent, the general population was still not really talking about. Despite these flashes in the pan to the rest of the world, Griezmann was still a nobody. Griezmann's childhood dream came true on August 29, 2010, when he made his La Liga debut. He got his first assist against Real Madrid, assisting Raul Tamudo for the equalizer. However, Real Madrid won the match 2-1 following a goal from Cristiano Ronaldo. This was Griezmann's introduction to the biggest stage and he quickly found out that La Liga was a huge step up from the Spanish second division. October 25th was a huge moment for Griezmann as he scored his first goal in the league in a 3-0 victory over Deportivo La Coruña. He celebrated the goal by pretending to drive a truck that was parked near the field, already showing signs that he was an absolute goofball. I mean more people were talking about his celebration than his performance. 
He was beginning to feel comfortable now in La Liga as he scored the only goal in his team's 2-1 loss to Hercules. He ended up scoring 52 goals and providing 18 assists for Real Sociedad including some massive goals. He scored the equalizing goal to get a 2-2 draw against Pep Guardiola's Barcelona, scored the only goal of the game in the final match of the 2012-2013 season against Deportivo La Coruña, securing Champions League qualification for Real Sociedad for the first time since 2004. The goal also ended up relegating Deportivo La Coruña. Griezmann scored on a volley against Lyon in his home nation of France, which helped Real Sociedad qualify for the Champions League group stages. Another important goal was also on a volley, this time against Athletic Bilbao in a Basque Derby League match in January of 2014, which ended 2-0 for Real Sociedad. Keep in mind, Griezmann's value doesn't come from his goals and assists. As we will see, it's not like he struggles to score goals, but the real quality of his play comes from his playmaking and his ability to link up with his teammates in possession. His work rate along with his technical ability make him a very unique player. Someone who can punish you in the final third but is also willing to work for the team. It's not a combination you'll find often. Griezmann was putting on a show and while he was flying under the radar still to fans, one team was paying close attention. Atletico Madrid. In July of 2014, Atletico Madrid reached an agreement with Real Sociedad for the transfer of Griezmann. At the time, coaches were making their tactics around inch-perfect passing and possession. I mean, just look at how Barcelona was dominating the world in that period. However, Atletico Madrid under Diego Simeone did not play like that. In a system built around high work rate and solid defending, Griezmann fit like a glove. He has no problems tracking back putting in a tackle, pressing the opposition, just like every other Atletico Madrid player. That's a very rare quality to find in players that are as good as Griezmann is going forward. Although he found the initial period difficult, learning to adjust to Diego Simeone's system, Griezmann ended up scoring 22 goals in the 2014-2015 season, surpassing Karim Benzema for most goals scored ever by a Frenchman in a single La Liga season. He was voted La Liga Player of the Month for January, and again for April. That same season, he was selected as the only athletical player and one of the three forwards in the team of the year alongside two familiar names, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. After his debut season, Griezmann scored 32 goals in the 2015-2016 season, 26 in the season after, 29 goals in the 2018 season, and 21 goals during his last season at the club. But he didn't just stop there. Griezmann lived for the big games. He scored the winning goal in the Madrid Derby at the Bernabeu, both goals in Atletico's 2-0 Champions League quarterfinal second leg win over Barcelona, as well as the winning away goal that knocked out Bayern Munich in the semi-finals and sent Atletico Madrid to their second Champions League final in three years. Unfortunately for Griezmann, the 2016 Champions League final was not one of the brighter moments in his career. Griezmann hit the crossbar with a penalty two minutes into the second half with his team trailing 1-0 against Real Madrid. Although he ended up redeeming himself by scoring in the penalty shootout, it was too late. Atletico was defeated 5-3. In football, the margins are tiny. Had Griezmann won that final, the way we view him would be drastically different. He had 7 goals in that Champions League campaign, was so important tactically to that Atletico side as a creative playmaker. Yet because history is written by the winners, his fantastic Champions League campaign will be forgotten. Griezmann's international path follows a very similar story. He's someone who has consistently been France's best player since 2016, but people rather talk about Kylian Mbappe, Paul Pogba, or even Olivier Giroud. Griezmann dragged a pretty average French side to the Euro Finals in the summer of 2016. I mean, please, just look at the state of this back line. Not to mention Moussa Sissoko was starting at right midfield in the final. Griezmann won the Golden Boot with 6 goals in the tournament, and despite France losing, he was named player of the tournament. Talk about heartbreak though man, the guy lost a UCL final and Euros final in the exact same summer. And just like the Champions League campaign, a lot of people have forgotten Griezmann's brilliance in the Euros tournament simply because his team didn't come out on top. Fortunately for Griezmann, the summer of 2018 was far more successful. Against Belgium in the semi-finals, he assisted the only goal of the game, a header from Samuel Umtiti. He then won the man of the match in the final after France defeated Croatia and ended up winning the bronze ball, which you get for being the third best player of the tournament. Despite Griezmann being so important to Deschamps' system, all the talks were about Kylian Mbappe. I mean, I get it. It's a lot more entertaining to talk about the electrifying 18-year-old who took the tournament by storm than a player like Griezmann who can only really be appreciated if you're watching his every move in a 90-minute game. But believe me, Mbappe was great. 
but Antoine Griezmann was France's best player in that World Cup win. Same thing happened in the 2022 World Cup. Everyone was talking about Mbappe when Griezmann was the piece that helped everything click as the hybrid midfielder, especially with them missing key players like Benzema, Pogba, and Kante. In fact, going into the World Cup final, it was pretty universally known that Griezmann had been France's best player in the tournament. He had just been the best player on the pitch for France against England and was leading the tournament as the joint top assister with three. His assist against England made him France's top assister of all time. If you look purely at individual statistics, you might not see Griezmann. But for those who value team performance and watch with a careful eye, his consistency cannot be ignored. They don't get to two international finals without him, and they certainly don't win the World Cup in 2018 without him at the heart of it all. Despite winning the holy grail of football, Griezmann's lack of team trophies at the domestic level is definitely a huge factor in why people don't talk more about him. I mean, the guy has literally never won a league title. That's right, not one. Why is that? Well, starting off his career at Real Sociedad definitely didn't help. Real Sociedad plays great football, but they were never going to win a La Liga with prime Barcelona and prime Real Madrid in their way. Not to mention they were in the Segunda division when Griezmann first joined them. At Atletico Madrid, the biggest trophy he won was the Europa League in 2018. He was unreal that season, scoring in the first leg of the semi-final against Arsenal, then assisting Diego Costa, who scored the only goal in the return leg. He then scored twice in the final against Marseille, helping Atletico Madrid lift the trophy for the third time in nine years. Here's the problem though, Europa League is not seen as the same thing as the Champions League. There's far less prestige, far less eyes watching, which means his fantastic performances will really only be remembered by the diehard Atletico Madrid fan. When Atletico Madrid did finally win a La Liga, he wasn't there. You might be asking yourself, why wasn't Griezmann at Atletico Madrid? We'll find that out later. After becoming only the third player of the 21st century to score 100 plus goals for Atletico Madrid, lifting the Supercopa de España with them and the UEFA Super Cup, Antoine Griezmann made the biggest mistake of his career in the summer of 2019. He joined Barcelona for a record $146 million fee. He actually started out on fire, scoring twice in a 5-2 win against Real Betis in his home debut and then scored his first Champions League goal against Borussia Dortmund in November. As I've told you guys before, Griezmann isn't always going to dominate the stats sheet. What he does well isn't always statistically shown. The problem is that when a team pays over 100 mil for a player, they want results immediately. Griezmann only scored 15 goals from 48 appearances in all competitions and just 9 in La Liga. Griezmann was finally at a club where there were more eyes on him, where good performances from him would immediately increase his popularity. However, the price tag of his move was always hanging over his head. Despite ending the 2020-2021 season with 20 goals and 13 assists, it was not enough for Barcelona fans. The move was an utter failure and Griezmann ended up returning to Atletico Madrid. What made things worse was his reputation was at an all-time low. The world was seeing him as a massive flop and despite the incredible individual achievements he had received before this period, the love for him was gone. Atletico Madrid fans had already begun to erase Griezmann from their memories. A plaque for him outside the stadium was vandalized in protest. He was booed every time he touched the ball. Slowly but surely though, Griezmann began to work his way back to the good side of the Atletico fans. He scored 15 goals and provided 16 assists last season, easily being one of the best players in La Liga. This season has been no different either, with him having 9 goals and 1 assist so far in 13 games. He is playing at a Ballon d'Or level right now, but just as we have seen throughout his career, he is being overlooked for guys like Kane, Bellingham, Holland, Mbappe. Griezmann's career is a story of redemption, someone who has reached the highest of highs but has also experienced the lows. If Atletico Madrid wins La Liga or the Champions League, I can see Griezmann finally getting his flowers. But if it's another trophy-less season, Griezmann's individual brilliance will be buried, similar to the other parts of his career. He is one of the best attackers that nobody talks about. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll love this video on another player that's absolutely disrespected, Harry Kane. Check it out right here.